Arizona Cardinals quarterback Kurt Warner is regarded as one of the best to ever play the game. He's been to the Super Bowl three times, winning Super Bowl 34 with the St. Louis Rams. Statistically, the four-time Pro Bowler is the second most accurate quarterback in the history of the NFL. In the 2008 season, he led the Cardinals to their very first Super Bowl appearance. But that's just one side of Kurt's story. The other side began over 20 years ago when he met his wife, Brenda. He was a struggling quarterback, and she was a single mom with two kids. You know, one of the first times I'd ever gone to the bar, um, wasn't much into it, but my roommates had kind of pulled me out to the bar and just noticed her from across the room. Uh, you know, short, brown, spiky hair with the mini skirt on and the, and the red boots and dancing up a storm out there. And the two hit it off, and at the end of the night, Kurt tried to kiss her. And though Brenda was interested in him, she felt she needed to tell him about her situation. I, he leaned over to kiss me, and I thought, seriously, I, I'm not playing a game, so I'm 25, divorced mother of two. If I never see again, I totally understand. The next day, Kurt paid her a visit, and he was met at the door by her two-year-old son, Zach. Went over there, I guess, to see her, but really the whole encounter was about her kids that, you know, said hello, walked in the door, and immediately saw her kids. Uh, her son, Zachary, grabbed me by the hand started leading me around uh, the house. Zach warmed up to Kurt almost immediately, and it didn't seem to matter to Kurt that Zach was blind. And that made quite an impression on Brenda, who was watching them with her infant daughter, Jessie, in her arms. You know, um, there are things that are deal breakers, and those are kind of deal makers, where Zachary took his hand. Being blind, he didn't know who Kurt was walking in, but he just knew it was somebody new. And he walked in, laid on the floor with Zachary, wrestled him, um, I sat Jesse down, and he just interacted with the kids, and I thought, this is something different. Kurt and Brenda's relationship grew, but Kurt's football career wasn't going well. He tried out with the Green Bay Packers, but going up against the likes of Brett Favre and Trent Dilfer didn't help. He was cut before the season even started. And now, with no job and no money, he moved into Brenda's parents' basement and got a job that only paid him five fifty an hour. I mean, I took the infamous job of working nights at a grocery store, and it was, you know, I mean, so much of, of life is about pride, and, you know, here I am, you know, living in her parents' basement without a job, and, and I'm just thinking, you know, gosh, this, is, this isn't me. This isn't what I want to do. I don't want to be, you know, just kind of taken from everybody else and not given anything. Kurt and Brenda had a great relationship, but there were some things they didn't see eye to eye on, especially when it came to having a relationship with God. He would tell me, so, some detail, and I'd say, well, show me that in the Bible. If you think that that's your core of your spiritual belief, show me. So we would honestly either argue about um, Jesus or we would decide that night to make out that night. It was one or the other, and that was our dating process, and kind of weird. Um, he preferred to make out. I preferred to argue about Jesus until he finally got it. What was it that, that you believed? What, was what you believing, was it right, or you just didn't know where to well, find it? or? You know, I think I just believed in the story. You know, I understood the story. I understood that Jesus died on the cross. I always use the reference that he was kind of like my spare tire, that up to that point I was driving, I was in control, and if I ever needed him, I could jump back in the back and grab my spare tire, and he could help me out in whatever trying time that was. Kurt and Brenda grew even closer, and Kurt felt the pressure to make enough money to marry and to have a family. So in 1995, he joined the Arena Football League with the Iowa Barnstormers. And when he did, he got more than he bargained for when his teammates invited him to a Bible study. It was in that process where, you know, I started to realize I really had no idea why I believed what I believed. Right. So I thought, okay, you know, they're asking me these questions. I'm going to figure out some answers for them. I'm going to start reading the Bible, and I'm going to find out why I believe what I believe. And it was through that process where, uh, as you open the Bible and you read the scriptures, it's obvious that it's all about Jesus and it's all about what he did on the cross and it's all about giving your life to him. And so in the process of trying to prove everybody around me wrong, uh, I ultimately proved them all right. Kurt realized he needed to make a change. Then Brenda had received news that her parents were killed when a tornado hit their town in Arkansas. I was hurting so much and yet he was there to just listen and not judge me and also be there for Jesse and Zach, my kids, because they lost their grandparents. I wasn't playing well on the football field. Uh, her parents were killed. Um, you know, and it was right around that time where I 
come to the realization that I needed to commit my life to Jesus. During their grief, Kurt gave his life to the Lord. And when he did, things began to change. He and Brenda married, and after leading the Barnstormers to two consecutive Arena Bowl appearances, he was offered a chance to play in the NFL Europe League for the Amsterdam Admirals. Then, in 1998, Kurt's dream to play in the NFL was realized when he signed with the St. Louis Rams. What changed? You know, what changed was that I no longer was looking at me, and I began looking at everybody around me and specifically looking at what God wanted for me. And that was a complete change for me. I realized that it wasn't about me, that if it works out in the NFL, it's because God wants me there and it's for me to do something for him. Kurt spent six seasons with the Rams, and after a season with the New York Giants, he moved on to the Arizona Cardinals, where he's still making his mark as one of the game's best. But that pales to his role as a husband and father of seven. He and Brenda have written a book about their life together entitled, First Things First, with the underlying message of staying focused on God. You know, I had death hit me, I had divorce hit me, I had infidelity, I had special needs. Um, child be affected, you don't know what's ahead. It's a fallen world. So I, I encourage people to see that if you build that foundation, then that's what matters. Just like our, our marriage, we knew what we believed before the NFL gave us millions of dollars. So when the millions of dollars come, that's not who defines us. That the NFL doesn't, the popularity, the fame and fortune, we have that foundation built beforehand. It doesn't mean everything's going to be perfect. And I think that's what people get the sense of when, okay, they see Kurt Warner and they know his story and, you know, her, Kurt and Brenda and the seven kids and everything's just perfect. And that's a huge part of this book is that it's not perfect. You know, her life, she's gone through struggles. I've gone through struggles. We still battle together. I mean, we you know, struggle raising kids, you know, but the thing, like she said, is that we always know that God's with us and God's leading us and God's going to work it together no matter where we screw up. I don't know how we do it you know, without him. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I think back to those years when I tried to do it by myself and I just, I think about my life now and I think about, you know, marriage and seven kids and I'm just thinking, there was no way I could figure this out and be successful by myself. That I know it's all about Jesus and that's why we are where we are.